program with Java. Won't that be super? Let's get started, and our first program we'll do in the console. Okay, maybe that was a little too intense, so we'll tone it down some. So we tone it down some. By the way, this is Sarah, my six-year-old daughter. By the way, this is Sarah, my six-year-old daughter. Apparently she's also a parent. Sarah, how do you feel about Java? Sarah, how do you feel about Java? What do you think of Java? What do you think of Java? Wow. I I think Java about Java. I think Java about Java. I think Java about Java. Okay. Okay. Sort of a self-repeating infinite loop. Let's do some Java. Today we're going to create our first Java application from the console. <coughs> We'll use the NetBeans integrated development environment for future projects. But just to show that you can compile uh, using your console and the JDK in a simple text editor, we'll compile a few applications from the command prompt. Now I'm on Windows 7, so I'll end up using Notepad. And the first thing I need to do is open up a command prompt. And I'm going to modify this a little bit. And I'm just going to change the background to white, the text to black and increase the font size. So hopefully you can see things a little bit better. Um, I'm going to use the DOS command cd space dot dot and I'm going to go to my dpartition and I'm going to use the command mkdir and make it a directory called java and I'm going to go to java and I'm going to use the command mkdir and make another directory and call it hello and I'm just going to clear the screen and use cd to go into hello. Okay, so just a few DOS commands. I've opened a command prompt, and now we've, we're all set here to at least use our commands. Two commands we'll use are Java to run an application and Java C to compile. And if you set things up properly, uh, as was indicated in the previous tutorials, you should be ready to go. So the other thing I'm going to need is. Windows Explorer just to kind of see what's going on and I'm going to need a text editor like Notepad. Now you want to make sure you don't use Word um, or WordPad because they'll add special formatting to the text and it needs to be plain ASCII text. So if you're in Windows, you could use Notepad, or there are several other good text editors out there like Context. Um, if you are in Linux, you could use gedit or vim to create a plain ASCII text file. Um, now one of the things that I need to be careful about when I compile is, um, this is sort of a, a subtle or, or hidden <coughs> issue that people have in Windows, and that is that by default, if I go to the View tab, this will be ticked or checked. All right, so probably, if, unless you've unchecked it, this is checked. And let me show you what can happen when you save files in Notepad and it's set to hide the known file extension. Let's say I had a file here, and we're going to call it test. And I'm going to save it. If I do that, all you see is test, okay? There is actually an extension, .txt, but it's hidden from you. So if I go here and here, and I untick that checkbox, the default option. Notice it displays the .txt. The problem with that is you may save a file, you know, my application, my program .java, but it may add a hidden .txt after the .java. So you go to compile it with Java C, and it tells you it can't find the file. And the reason is, is that Windows is hiding that from you. So again, to avoid that issue, just go to folder and search options, and make sure you untick or uncheck hide extensions for known file types. Okay, so the folder is empty and we have Notepad open and I'm going to go ahead and make an empty source file and save it in that directory. So let's go down to the directory that we created and I'm just going to call this hello.java. Okay, and there it is. Now it's in that directory. There's our file extension. And I'm going to go ahead and add some source code. And by, you know, by default, you'll usually prefix or add a, a, a line or a comment tag to an application that you're going to create. So 
Uh, a forward slash forward slash is one way to do comments in Java just like in C++ and you may call call the program whatever you like but it would be the program's title and then possibly the date and what is today let's see July 3rd 2010 almost the fourth happy fourth people um, okay and a comment tag just tells the computer to ignore all of that text or whatever comes after the comment tag so in this case this isn't Java code I don't want to try to compile it into bytecode, that would be a syntax error, but it's just a comment that I wanted to leave. And there are other ways to do comment tags. If I do these kinds of comment tags, then any text I type in between them, even if it goes onto multiple lines of text, would be considered a comment by Java and would not be processed. Okay, so my comment tag's added, and we're going to create a simple class. And to do that, we need a modifier. In this case, we'll use the modifier public. There are three types of modifiers in Java, public, private, and protected. And we'll go into greater detail about those later. I need the keyword class, I need a name, and in Java, the name has to match the file name. And Java is a case sensitive language, just like C++. So if my file is called capital H, lowercase, ELLO dot Java, I could not call my class banana, nor could I call my class lowercase, hello but it has to match the file name exactly so capital H capital H lowercase e l l o lowercase e l l o okay everything in Java that is a block of code goes in between an opening curly brace and a closing curly brace and I'll add this in there and that just tells Java what goes with what Java uses these braces to be able to tell um, you know where a block of code ends and begins. In other words, it can tell that whatever I put between this brace here and this brace here belongs to that class. Now you'll use braces not just for classes but functions and if and else structures, logic structures, repetition structures, loops. Um, but my suggestion to you is when you add your braces always add your open and closing brace and then go back and type your code in between them. It may cost you a second or two in terms of banging out your code, but it's going to save you a lot in the long run in terms of trying to uh, debug or, or find syntax issues and logic issues. And the reason I say that is by the time you get a few thousand lines of code into a program and you have you know several levels of nesting and nested if and else structures and switch statements, it can get very tricky in terms of you know diagnosing or, or finding brace issues and that can throw the entire compiler off. We'll take a look at that in a minute. The next thing we need is a function and with a console program, every console program needs a main function and there are, again we're going to add a modifier, in this case public and we're going to add another modifier called static and a return type void and the function name which is special, main the argument list which goes in open and closing parentheses and the argument that main will take is an array of strings. Don't worry about that. We'll cover arrays later. We're just going over the basic parts of your first Java application. And of course, there'll always be open and closing braces to go with the function, with the class, and with other structures in Java. So this is our basic main function. Again, a modifier, just like the class. This modifier, static, indicates that we can use this function without having to build an instance of the class. And that's, you know, it needs to be static. Main should always be static, at least in your first console object, because uh, you haven't had an opportunity to build other classes. If I could build an instance of other classes and call their methods, call their functions, then they could be non-static. And you don't want to make everything static. But in this instance, our simple first Hello World application we want a static main function because this will be the very first class that we call with Java and when we run it through the virtual machine it will not have had an opportunity to build other classes from itself so because of that the method the function needs to be static 